to Donna Joseph, who is here tonight to speak about love, self-empowerment and belief. Uh, Donna is passionate about supporting those that have experienced painful emotions uh, due to the lack of love during childhood. Something I think a lot of us can relate to. Please welcome <coughs> to the stage with her speech entitled Core and More, Donna Joseph, everybody! up those who can recall their first memory? Any of you? If it's anything like mine, it's quite vivid. I remember being in the high chair and actually remember having this spoon in my hand and thinking, why have I got this spoon and everyone else has got something else to eat with? But I must have only been about two years old because I was in a high chair, right? I also remember being a little bit older and I was on the climbing frame in the garden and I was singing my heart out. I was probably about five years old and I didn't have a care in the world what the neighbours thought or anything. I was just singing my heart out. Another very precious memory that I have, which may have actually been my first, is when I was really young and I was sitting on my father's knee. Now, when I was really young, I was really cute. I mean, really cute. I'm not just saying that. My mum and dad told me that everyone used to coo into the pram and go, oh, isn't she so cute? She's so lovely, that beautiful olive skin. Isn't she pretty? And I have this memory of sitting on my father's knee and I had this really infectious laugh. And what I realised is that the more I laughed and the more I smiled, the more I made everyone else laugh. So everyone was laughing and smiling and I was laughing this infectious laugh loads and loads and loads because it was positive and I was getting that real positive attention which as a child we all like, right? And then I got a bit older. And whereas that attention over there was very warm and lovely and soft, I got a different type of attention as I got older and as my skin got darker the attention got colder and sharper. Now don't get me wrong, I'm bound in gratitude for my parents that adopted me but they were both white and in fact the family I grew up in were all white the whole uh, neighbourhood was white. In fact, the whole planet, as far as I was concerned, was white. And I was the only one that was different. I was the only one that had this different skin and this different hair. But what really was quite sad was the names that I got called. I got called nigger. I got called wog. But you know what really hurt? What really hurt was that the grown-ups, some of them, would actually walk across the other side of the road rather than be on the same side as me. That's what really hurt. So I was desperately wanting to fit in. I didn't enjoy being different. So what I used to do quite a lot is I used to daydream a lot in my bedroom. I would daydream for hours and in my daydreams I would be like the girl that was on the climbing frame singing with the confidence. But what was happening to me was that confidence, that gift was just slowly shrinking, shrinking away. By the time my teenagers, you could safely say I had a huge identity crisis. So at the age of 17, I packed my bags and I moved to London and I left all of that behind. And actually in London, I remember walking down Queensway and there was all these different faces, all these different colours and cultures and I, I fitted in. No one looked at me strangely. I just fitted in like with everyone else. It was great. 
Not long after being in London, something happened that changed my whole world. Sitting on the train one day, sat down, two women, two black women sat across from me. They were whispering, but they weren't whispering so I couldn't hear. They were whispering loud enough, deliberately, so that I could hear every single word that they said. You know, I couldn't understand Patwa then, but I did understand some of the words. And what they were, were bitch and slag and mixed race and half caste. Two black women. So when the train stopped, I got off the train. It wasn't my stop, but I stood on the platform, had tears in my eyes. I could not believe what had just happened. I let the train go by through the tunnel. And in that moment, I realized something. I realised something very, very important. I'd had an identity crisis. I'd been searching for my colour. And in that moment, I realised that my colour was nothing. My colour was nothing, my hair was nothing. Those two women helped me to realise who I was in here, me. And this in here, there's no colour, there's no hair, there's no, there's no nothing, it's just me in here. Now from that moment, I started finding pieces of me to make this me whole again. And once I started becoming whole again, I started to realise that that was my gift and that my gift was, was was huge if I wanted it to be, because it was me. And once I became whole and I had that gift, I started grabbing every opportunity that I could find to fulfil my gift. So like that girl on the climbing frame singing her heart out, I'm here now as a public speaker. I'm a radio presenter, I'm a children's presenter. I'm a teacher, I'm a trainer, I'm a coach. I'm living my dream. Now, if there is anything I can teach you all tonight, is to know that you are not the colour of your skin, you are not your attire, you are not any disfigurement or anything on your face or your hair or on your body. You are and always have been a wonderful, beautiful, magnificent gift and if you don't know where that is then you need to dig deep real deep down here because your gift our gift all of our gifts are in here and if we can just dig deep be in the moment and dig deep to the center to the core your gift is there it is core amor thank you Thank you.